Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Super Fantify. This being a show where we talk about TV shows of the supernatural, fantasy, and or science fictional genre. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about the season finale of the live-action Avatar, The Last Airbender. A great season finale. A lot of really interesting things went down in this episode, so let's break it down. So, obviously, our trio of Team Avatar goes on on the first offense of taking down a battleship by themselves. Pretty, uh, pretty nice, dope sequence of them working as a team, but it's one of many, many battleships, and so them alone isn't going to be enough. They were hoping to at least kind of ease things out, like, oh, maybe we struck a little here, struck a little there, you know, death by a thousand cuts almost type of situation but not nah, it's just too much for them to handle so all they can do there's no like for charging for the southern water tribe i mean the northern water tribes are so they're going to have to just uh rally up their defenses and prepare for the strike at the same time this is all going down zhao has his because i couldn't remember what zhao's whole shtick was because at first i saw that wooden box and i was like do you have an insider to the water tribe is that what's going on there no, he has a very special knife, a knife from uh, Avatar Kodak, a knife that can kill a spirit. And his plan is to kill uh, the moon spirit. Because if he kills the ocean spirit, because the um, the water tribe derives their power from the moon, which obviously just even like from a scientific, scientific perspective, it also makes sense too because it's like, well... Obviously, the phases of the moon affects the ocean and the tide and everything, and obviously that's reflected. I mean, much like how those um, those creatures are what taught, uh, or, or why the earthbenders learn how to earthbend, the ocean tide is actually what ended up teaching waterbenders how to waterbend. So I, I always love like it all being symmetrical, not symmetrical, it's symmetrical, like how it all like works like that. I, um, but he doesn't plan on killing the ocean spirit because he's like, no, no, if I do that, like, it will, we as the Fire Nation will suffer. But I'm going to kill the water spirit. Because he's also saying, like, I'm not a monster. I'm not going to kill every man, woman, and child. Which is so interesting considering, like, uh, the Fire Lord Sozin was not afraid to do that when he wiped out the entire Earth. All of the Earth, I mean, not Earth, Airbenders. So, when it's all said and done, Zhao's like, I'm not a monster. But I will kill the moon spirit and um, with that, take away their water bending. But even Iroh is like, you don't know what you're doing when it comes to the spirit world. You're going, you're thinking you're doing the simple thing of like, or you're stopping them from bending. This will have ramifications all across the board. Like you have no idea what the longstanding issues of that could be with stripping the world of the moon. You take away the balance, the yin and the yang, and when the world is un balance that's when crap really hits the fan but Zhao is so fixated on his obsession with power which so many in the fire nation are i mean there's so many parallels zuko's obsessed with power even though he toes that line back and forth with everything going on he wants to sneak into the northern water tribe just to go after ang with everything going on because all he can see he's blinded by his his quote-unquote redemption where Zhao is obsessed with power Azula obsessed with power being what she believes is claiming what she believes to be rightfully hers and Ozai believing it is his right his birthright to be the one to kind of run things this is this is his world to bend to his uh it's it's up to him to bend the world to his name it's need and the only one that's amongst the fire nation once again not even obsessed with power is iro you know he's the one trying to be the voice of reason for everyone but no one's w willing to listen to him everyone's just too obsessed with their own situation so but the fire nation ends up attacking um, the water, uh, the, the northern water tribe does their best it's actually katara that convinces Paku, like, stop being so stubborn and let every one of us help. You know, because even um, the lady who Katara went to for training last episode, it's like, you old fool. This isn't time. Like, yes, you want to, like, focus on tradition in the past. We will not have a future if you don't change. And so they do what they can to reinforce the walls and, it, like, backing up all the warriors. Like, everything's going down. Sokka is to protect Yue because if something happens to Arnok, it's like she will be the future of the Water Tribe. So, 
while Iroh and Zhao are sneaking by on a ship made by Sai, specifically by Sai and Sokka, because Sokka told Sai that episode, uh, in episode four, because Sai was like, I just give them stuff, it can't really do anything, you know, but Sokka said, any of your inventions can be a tool of war, especially in the Fire Nation's hand, and it comes full circle in this regard, especially for Sokka, it's got to suck, because the thing they used to sneak in was something you helped engineer, you helped Sai, like Sai probably would have figured it out anyway, but Sokka's help expedited that up to some extent, and obviously that was before, um, like, this is something Sai ended up turning over to the Fire Nation spies at the time, so... Once again, not knowing what other means his technology could be used for in the future. Like, you helped kind of, sadly, lead to such a catastrophe. That's got to be a, a heavy thing. Like Once again, it's not on Sokka. He helped with it, but that was all size invention. So he can't fool, like, it's not all on him, but it's still an element of how that came back to bite Sokka, too. Especially because at the time, he wanted to believe Sai that things weren't what they were. But the moment he found out Sai was a spy for, like, working with the Fire Nation spies, like, he did chew him a new one, obviously. Well, rip him a new one is what I meant to say, but I said chew, but you get what I'm trying to say. I think it's just showing you the impact of this fight of just, like, right, it was... Who knows if it was early morning, midday, whatever the case may be, the fight goes into the night and it just like it's just relentless and un, un just the Fire Nation just shows you how unrelenting they can be. And it's just obviously I went into this episode, once again, I didn't remember everything, but I knew where UA story ends up going, which is like the tragedy of it all. But uh, there was bits and pieces. It wasn't until Aang did what he did that I was like, yeah, I think I remember that. But I, I distinctly remember the UA story playing out the way it does. But that's the sad thing. Zhao, despite multiple times Iroh telling him not to do this, he does it regardless. Because for him, it's just it's about power. For him, it's like, now I'm going to be the next Fire Lord. Who cares what Ozai thinks or what he would want? Like, Zhao is so completely obsessed with power. This is my opportunity to to take the reins this is my destiny i have destiny on my side and he believes like he can change everything this this is his opportunity to rise above and he's like right iroh if you stay on the right side of history you can be by my side when i rise to be which also like i don't know why you're so stupid in thinking like ozai won't burn you to a crisp your ambitions are what end up destroying you and it's a kind of a point Iroh was trying to make like don't like let him like don't even worry about him Zuko like his ambitions he's a small man who's going to basically get what's coming to him Aang tried to say like right you can have me but it's like right you're the avatar what's that going to mean anything master of three elements doesn't have the same reign to it you, you didn't matter you never did which Aang is like right you are right I failed my duty as an avatar, but it's like still trying to beseech to Zhao not to do this, but given the opportunity, he does. And because of it, the water benders lost their bending and it made it easier for the Fire Nation. It was going to be a repeat of what happened to the airbenders. And in that moment, just all Aang can think about is his failure, but also think about what Kiyoshi, what Ryo, uh, Roku, what, uh, what um, Kuruk had said to him. Once again, it is kind of important to note that the only airbender he interacted with was Gyatso. He hasn't, in, I mean, I guess that's kind of meant to be the parallel because he never talks to an airbending avatar. He speaks to Gyatso, but that's still being drowned out by everything else. The other three elemental avatars have said to him. And in that moment, Aang is just like, he gives up and just like, for him, it's like, this isn't my world. I should have died a hundred years ago. But I will stake everything. My life, my position as the Avatar is to sacrifice myself for the greater good. And so he basically gives into the spirit of the ocean. 
and it completely consumes him and he goes full kaiju and starts wrecking havoc. Because I distinctly remember that because in that moment, like every water, every waterbender just stops and kneels. And I was like, I feel like I remember that from the original series, like everyone just stopping and just bowing as like Aang like goes full kaiju and starts wrecking shop. Zhao obviously runs for his life, which leads to a confrontation. Well, I'd skipped over it because Zuko and Katara fought. Which I love that whole point of Aang being like, go easy on him. There's been enough people hurt. And Zuko's like, I don't care. He's like, I wasn't talking to you and leaves it to Katara to handle this. And she easily, well, the fight was pretty much a draw. Like... She got the upper hand on Zuko, but he was breaking out of the ice she was in. But, I mean, who knows how that fight would have played out if it continued. Because uh, Zuko is... I don't even know if he'd be considered... A, he is talented in his own right, but I don't know if he'd be even considered a master firebender. Because Katara's getting touted as, like, a master waterbender. But I, I think they, I, skill level-wise, they're probably on the same. But it's like, both of them have so much riding on the light. So many lives are at stake for... Uh, Katara for Zuko it's like my men but it's also mostly me it's my my redemption back into my family like so to them this 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 battle this is this is everything's on the line but yeah Aang completely consumed by the spirit like there's no more avatar there he's lost and consumed by the spirit and the way Yue puts it too it's like this sad thing of like yeah the the the, the equilibrium of the yin and yang is broken the ocean spirit is nothing more than a vengeful spirit now forever searching for its counterpart that it will never be able to find which is like so tragic you know that's that in itself is the heart of uh, tragedy of so many like folklores and mythologies that type of situation which is heartbreaking which leaves Yue to sacrifice herself you know and especially that message she had said to like not message but that point she had gotten across to Sokka of yeah like do you know why one night the spirits decide to be in this world in physical form is because they want to know what it's like to be mortal even for just one night and I think it just it speaks volumes for Yue where it's just like her time with Sokka for just one day or whatever this time, I was able to fully just be Yue with you. And once again, it's like Sokka was able to just be Sokka with her. And it's just, it, it the parallels between their circumstances. And it's like, especially Sokka beating himself up because it's like, I couldn't do anything. He even brings it up later in Arnak. Like, I, I couldn't even be there to fight with anyone as a warrior. Like, I just stood on the sidelines. And the thing I was meant to do was protect Yue and she sacrificed her life for everyone's. But it's like, Arnok looks at it as, Yue might have been scared, but at least she had someone there so it didn't make it as scary, you know? Because for her, it's like, I was given this, like, I was given extra time when the moon, uh, when the, uh, moon, the spirit, moon spirit, like, decided to save me. I can give that life back, and she gave it to the, back to the moon spirit, which you could say, like, when it's all said and done, it was always kind of a borrowed time situation, and it's just... Being able to kind of give that back. And, and in a way, and this is an important thing to keep in mind, they were all like UA lives on. Her spirit is there too. Because I know they, spoilers, I know they do do a little more with UA later on. She's not gone, gone forever. Like, she's always had her ties to the spirit world too. So it's like she gets to live on through the moon uh, spirit. She'll always kind of be a part of it. If I remember, if that's what if I remember UA circumstances to some extent, like I said, I feel like I remember the original series tackling that a little bit, but I definitely re like in this moment, I feel like it, but I might be just thinking about later on in this series. I do vi vividly feel like I remember like Sokka interacting with like UA spirit because she's not like gone, gone. You know, she was always able to go into, you know, her connection with the spirit world was always through dreams. So I think that that element does ultimately end up coming full circle later on, too. And obviously you have Katara trying to reach out to Aang, even though he's lost. But it's like, you know, this isn't on you. Like, come back. Like, the world needs the Avatar. It's like, your family, you're not in this alone, you know. And it tells him, it's like, it's not just the world that needs you. I need you. And at the same time, that's all happening. Aang is, Katara's words are getting through with him. And in conjunction with Yue's sacrifice, the ocean spirit quells its anger. Now that its equilibrium is found again, the moon has been restored. 
I mean, while that was all going out, like Zhao meets his end, Zuko and him duke it out, and Zhao like breaks the news to Zuko. It's like, did you really think your father ever would have really forgiven you? Like you've been holding on for these three years of this hope. I mean, it's even something that. Iro was like I, I think in retrospect he's going to realize like my uncle always knew the truth that's why he decided to come with me like they had that whole point of conversation of like it might be a long time before we come back home for Iro there was nothing really left for him with the fire nation like all he cared about is like right I'm gonna go with my nephew like once again that's why I talk about it previously like I don't actually remember what Iro's relationship with Azula is like obviously it's a very very complicated relationship with his brother but it's like his nephew's the only one that he's really, really close to. But he's trying to, he had tried to convey that point of like, yeah, maybe even if you do come back, like your return will be unexpected. It's like Zuko wants to believe like my father gave me this mission knowing like I will be able to accomplish it. I thought it was impossible, but now it's within my grasp. But I was telling him, like, it was all bullshit. Your father never wanted you to complete this mission. He never thought you'd prove yourself worthy enough to complete this mission. And it's like, it's hard to say, especially with what Iroh says later on. You're like, in his own twits, because Zhao is saying, like, right, like, all he wants to do is bet, like, harden your sister, like, what she would, the warrior she'll be forged. You were just meant to be the fire that is the for fire to fuel the forge that was meant to mold your sister into a warrior. That's, that's your only purpose. And, I think there's some truth to that, but I do believe there is an ebb and flow. Like in his own way, Ozai does want to better both of his children because it's a, it's all about who can prove themselves. Azula, can she really prove herself? Like, oh, she just needs the proper motivation. Because um, he even says later on, like, oh, like one of his the sages tells him, like, oh, um, Zuko was a part of all. You know, he was there at the battle. Who know there was a lot of lives lost, but then. Ozai's like, yeah, but if Zuko's strong, he'll survive. But if he's not, the weak can be sacrificed for the sake of the strong, which obviously goes back to the whole strategy he had about sacrificing the 41st. And then you also had the conversation where like uh, Zuko's like, if you let the weak survive, like they can become strong if you give them a chance. And Ozai's not about giving people those chances. He's like, only the strong deserve to survive. The weak need to be sacrificed to feed and make stronger the the strong because it's like well if if uh if uh if my son dies if he lives cool but if he dies at least he served the purpose of making his sister that much of a greater warrior because he pushed her the motivation necessary it's just you know so that's where i'm like that's where yes and no where it's like he wanted his son to prove himself, and he's fine with Zuko doing that. But he's also saying, like, if not, if Zuko can't prove himself, at least he, at least his life had some meaning because his death gave Azula the fuel to kind of do what's done. Which we find out what that is later on, and that is that they captured Boomy. I'd actually kind of forgotten about that. Like seeing Boomy captured, I'm like, I do feel like I remember him being locked up. But yeah, Omashu has fallen. Very much like century, like a century ago, they attacked, or saying they were going to attack the Earth Kingdom when in actuality they were going after the Earthbenders. Same thing happens here. While everyone's so focused on the North, the Earthbenders don't see what's coming their, their way. But it's just like the devastation. It's like, it's a really heartbreaking thing secret just like a lot of a lot of stuff like hits at once it's just kind of like well you have Zuko's emotional turmoil because of all of what Zhao says granted it's Iroh that ends up putting Zhao down which he did tell Zhao I will make you pay 10,000 fold whatever you do to the moon spirit I don't remember if that's how Zhao meets his in the original series or not maybe maybe not it might have been he might have been caught up by the spirit because I'm sure, like, the spirit would have wanted direct vengeance on him, but he's, like, on the ground and amongst the crowd. Like, he wouldn't have been able to find him. But I feel like that might have been how he met his in the original series was the spirit. But it's, like, also poetic that Iroh maybe... I mean, maybe it's maybe it played out exactly the same way in the original series. I don't know. Um, but, yeah, it's just, like, everything with Yue and Sokka and also Aang beating himself up about everything... But it's like, yeah, this is sadly, this is this is war, and it's not his fault. Aang did what he could. He's he's not he's not in a position to do. Like, yes, you are the Avatar, but you can't be expected to do everything because 
you've uh, who knows in the grand scheme of things like how long it's been since he came out of the ice you know but uh, you just look around at the devastation the lives lost there they made sure to show you the guy that walked up the Katara who wanted to help out he was like yo like Paku sent us this way and called her Master Katara that guy and it's just kind of like, man, I told him to reinforce some walls and help out. But she was like, if there's fireballs, like, don't try to handle it on your own. And who knows when the guy could have died, you know, because Katara probably feels guilt of, yeah, I, you know, he was following my lead. And who knows, like, just there's, then we also see um, Han, he sacrificed himself, stayed behind with the other warriors to make sure Arnok and others were able to escape. It's also the Momo situation, which was really sweet. Momo sacrificed himself to save uh, someone where some a child where some robo is going to fall on them. In fact, UA ended up using the Oasis power to end up healing Momo, which Sokka and uh, Momo have their back and forth, but it's like, oh, are you little furball? Like, don't scare me like that again. It's just a lot of an... I mean, obviously, it's a big spectacle battle, but it's just like the devastation and destruction. It's just... It also comes, like, obviously so full circle because... The opening of the season is the the death of not not the opening opening but you get what I'm saying like a, a good chunk of the first episode is the genocide of the Airbenders and now you have like all this death and destruction that followed in a Northern Water Tribe. Paku had brought up this point to uh, Katara last episode about how. Water is the element of change, and he recognizes, like, that's something he had kind of, he got so stuck in his ways about the past that he had kind of forgot the change, and so it's, it's about them changing and adapting, and it's like, we, yes, a lot was lost, but we will rebuild and come back and emerge stronger than ever, and is asking Katara to stay behind to be, like, a master uh, to teach some upcoming waterbenders, but for her, it's like her journey with Aang isn't over. And it's Paku's like, yeah, he's going to need a master to teach him. There could be no finer master than you to teach him how to waterbend. So obviously for story beat purposes, obviously this is a crucial moment in story and just the grand scheme of things. But it's also like the emotional and lessons that were learned by our heroes and how they will carry this forward to become and grow from this experience. It, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a crucial story point, especially at such a pivotal point in the story especially considering we learned that Ozai and his people have been able to track the comet the same comet that the fire nation used a hundred years ago to destroy the airbenders that comet is coming around soon because it had a different name beforehand but now it's known as Sozin's comet because he was the one that uh, wiped out the airbender, so he, he gained a lot of reputation, like, the, the, the comments associated with him now. Because, I like, I, not unless I'm mistaken, but like, like, it did have a different name in uh, episode one, didn't it? I think, like, what in the Fire Lord at the time named Sozan, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, so. I think that's the, the that's our teaser at the end of the season. I was curious if we were going to tease a certain character, because, obviously... Aang is going to learn water bending from Katara, but the whole point was like, oh, well, we'll go back to Omashu so that Aang can learn from Bumi, but Bumi's not going to be his teacher. It's going to be another person we'll get to meet uh, in the future. I thought we might tease up that person, but no, no, no. The the comet is the, the tease of showing like, right, we know the devastation that happened last time with the comet's power for the Fire Nation. So it's also the parallel of, right, the the waterbenders were supposed to be having their power taken away from them, and now here's the firebenders who were in a who took that power from them, but it didn't stick, and now it's like, oh, they're in a position where they're about to get, like, the ultimate power, and they're going to use that, you know? The Avatar is still out there, which, you know, Ozai accounted for this. He accounted for this. He accounted for... The Northern Warther tribe not to actually fall, but once again, it all serves its own purposes. Um, obviously, Zuko, it's unclear for him, like, what is he going to do? Like, his only purpose in life for the past three years, all, the only goal he had was redemption, and now he feels like, wait, it was all bullshit? Like, what am I supposed to do with that? So, you know, Iroh, it's like, right, we're still here. I'm sure Lieutenant G and the others didn't get in the thick of the battle, so they're probably out there looking for us, so what do you want to do, Zuko? And he, he doesn't know. He's, he's aimless right now, so...
it is February 27th at the time we were recording this. Um, it hasn't been revealed whether or not there's going to be a season two. Netflix hasn't made that decision yet, to be fair. It hasn't even been a full week yet. It's only been out for five days, so it usually takes a little bit of time. I've... I have not looked too deeply into it. I've gotten glimpses of the general reception. You know, I'm sure people, there's some stuff that people like, other stuff they don't like about this live action adaptation. I've, th- I've thoroughly enjoyed it. Once again, maybe it's because I have not seen the original in so long, so there's so much I've forgotten, so I'm a lot more forgiving maybe than other people do with certain things. And maybe there's plenty of people who, who have never watched the original series that are like, I don't like this live edit. Like, I don't like this series as a whole. Like, you know, maybe people feel like that too. So I'm not going to fault anyone. You didn't like it. You didn't like it. I did. So I'd I'd love to see more. Um, Because, I mean, there's so much great stuff in the future of, like, this story too. And I'd be so excited to see them adapt it. Um, So I'd, I'd, I'd hope they'd be able to do... I mean, I'd assume, like, it would only be three seasons. One for every season of the show. I mean, this is... You know, once again, minus some of the more misadventure stuff. I'm sure there's probably other stuff they had to cut just for purposes, but for the most part, it's all the season one. I don't, not unless I'm, I doubt they do a splitting like see, like book three or anything like that. I think it's all going to be just like each season is one, one season. Like if it gets the opportunity. So fingers crossed. I think it hasn't like it doesn't have an extremely poor reception. It's just kind of. Once again, I can't speak for the entire like internet and how everyone feels about it. Just some of the reception I've seen has kind of been middling to okay reception wise. But once again, I've thoroughly enjoyed it, and I I love to see um, more of the series, uh, all of the series get adapted. So I hope they do get that chance. But once again, that comes down to the general reception and obviously how many people watch. If not enough people watch, then they're not going to bother. But we'll, we'll see. I mean, it, it ends up being that one piece conversation of I'm curious how many people are I'm sure a majority of people well, that's also the thing like I'd assume a majority of people who are watching this are fans I'm curious how many people have known nothing about maybe they've heard of Avatar but they've never watched it this is their first interaction with the franchise um, and that's also the thing too you never know like how much of a fan base exists like how many like like maybe most of the people watching this aren't fans of the show. Maybe they're just people being like, "Oh, what's this thing on Netflix? Let me watch." You know, maybe they saw the trailers. Oh, this seems interesting. I'd assume most people interacting with this would be fans, just like One Piece or any adaptation. But you never know how much they make of the view, how much of a percentage they make up of the viewing audience. Sometimes it, I think it might be bigger than what it is. And like I said, the most people who have no association with the show, with this franchise, might not like might be majority of the viewers maybe maybe not it's always i'm sure that varies from project to project but like i said fingers crossed hoping for a season two because i'd love to see uh um once again not even just a season two but a season two and three just get the entire series adapted so but yeah that's pretty much all i wanted to talk about to the next time we meet be happy be safe live life to the fullest and enjoy it good day and good bye